Hi, I'm Mary, a librarian and book reviewer with a focus on stories written for kids, tweens, and teens. Today, I get to share with you this book called The Sword of Souther Lee, written by Gregory O. Smith, and this is the 10th in the Wright Cousin Adventures series. In this book, the cousins have just come off of the last adventure where they narrowly escaped space and landed safely, and now they are in the land of Gutenberg, visiting with some friends at their castle. Now, what's interesting is that an ancient law has been unearthed stating that anyone who owns a particular sword is actually the king. And unfortunately, nobody knows what that sword looks like or who has it. So is the king really the king? We don't know. And unfortunately, there are some nefarious forces who are interested in claiming the sword as their own. So of course, that means that the king and his children are in danger and the right cousins are in the right place at the right time to help them out. So as they go through their adventure, they are uh, facing lots of enemies who are after just the power and the fame that come with the throne. And it's up to them to make sure that the king can maintain his title and also follow the law at the same time. So this story is the 10th in the Wright Cousin Adventure series, and it does pick up right where uh, the ninth book left off. While it can stand on its own, it's helpful to have read the other books in the series because then you have a sense of the characters and how things kind of come together. There are also some reminders in this book of what has come before and which book it's in, so in case you need to go back and refresh your memory, you'll know exactly where to do that. In this book, we see some familiar faces and some uh, characters who have been mentioned before but haven't really had much of a voice. So in this book they get a little bit more of that voice and it's really fun to watch it come out. So like the other uh, books in this series there's a lot of uh, funny and enjoyable dialogue and banter among the cousins. Everyone has a really unique voice that comes out in that dialogue um, and this one has a lot of adventure as well. So there's some peril, some uh, action, and it's all wrapped up in this really lovely package. So as you're going through it, it flows really smoothly. You care about the characters and what happens to them. And as the mystery gets solved, um, you learn more about the characters and their personalities at the same time. So this story is written for middle grade readers. Um, it reads really swiftly um, because of the dialogue that's in here. You see the chapters are pretty short. Um, and because, you're, or if you're familiar with the rest of the books, then you're uh, already pretty much immersed in the story. So much like a Nancy Drew or Hardy Boys mystery, there is a formula to these books. Um, so for readers who are newer to longer chapter books or enjoy just being able to kind of sit down and finish one fairly quickly, um, this is a great series for those readers, um, especially ones who are interested in more of that wholesome problem solving that comes from family and good friends. Um, Though the characters in this are teens, it does speak to younger teens and tweens as well, um, especially because it is written in that accessible style. So if this sounds like a great book for you and a great series for maybe your kiddo, I hope you look for it at your favorite bookstore.